Hello Guardians, it is Ebontis here, and it is August 11th and Solstice of Heroes has begun. Now the big piece of this is upgrading your armor through its different levels. You start with the Renewed set, which is the blue or rare version. And then the next step is kind of the second tier, which is going to be the Majestic Armor. This is going to be a video of a guide, kind of tips of taking you from the Renewed set for any subclass up to the Majestic set. I will do a separate video taking the Majestic set and tips to complete all the objectives there so you can get the Magnificent set. And remember, the Magnificent set, the third tier, is the one once you complete the objective on each piece of armor, then you unlock the White Glow. If you're looking for the colored glows, you have to earn the Magnificent set, which is still the third tier. But from there, once you've earned it, you don't have to finish the Masterwork objectives. You can buy the ornaments from Eververse that give you the colored glows. So just a quick reminder. But when you come in, you're going to load into the tower, talk to Ava Levante. She's going to start you off in the quest. She's also going to give you a helm. Make sure you equip the helm before you go do anything else. Then, once the helm is equipped, boot up into the European Aerial Zone. You can find that on the director or pretty much just right next to her. When you load into the aer aerial zone, European Aerial Zone, complete one full run. Just like, you know, shoot the bosses, kill the enemies, find the treasure chests. As soon as you're done with that one, head right back to the tower. Once you finish it, head back to the tower, talk to Ava Levante. She's going to move the quest forward one step. And then make sure you meditate at the statue, which is the big statue between her and the European Aerial Zone launcher. And that's going to give you the rest of the armor set. Once you have all five pieces, and make sure you always have them equipped. That is key. The progress will not be made on the armor if you are not, if you do not have the pieces equipped. So make sure you're not like running a different random piece of armor to get a high level. Doesn't matter. Most of the activities you're going to be doing right now are so low, it's not going to matter. So make sure all the pieces are equipped. And now we're going to talk about tips on how to get this thing going. So here we go. All right, so each set of armor is going to have different requirements on it that you have to do to kind of complete the objectives for that piece. Now, one major reminder, you have to have the armor equipped for any of these things to count. Now, any, most of the objectives that they're going to have you go do don't require very high level. Hence, if it's 1020, it's not that big of a deal. Anything that you might need higher is going to be a higher level piece of armor later on anyway. This stuff's pretty basic at first. Now, between the Hunter, the Warlock, and the Titan, there are very minor differences. It's pretty subtle. So take the Helm, for example, on the Titan. I need Precision Final Blows. Every character needs those. Doesn't matter which one. Now, it may not be on the Helm. That may be on the Cloak, but you still need 50 Precision Final Blows. That's basically getting that yellow headshot as the final kill. But for the Titan, I need 100 Hive defeated. For the Hunters, I think it's 100 Fallen. And then for the Warlocks, I think it's 100 Cabal. My advice is use Lost Sectors. For the Titan, I went to the Core Terminus Lost Sector on Mars. Up here in the Braytech Futurescape. Uh, it's like 62 or 63 Fallen that you get to, or Hive that you get to kill in here. And it's honestly one of the quickest ones to do. So if you're a Titan, this one's a great place I've used to farm many times. If you are a Warlock, I believe it's Cabal, or if I'm getting these characters crossed, this is the one for Cabal. Come down here to the Glacial Drift, and you've got the Ma'adim Subterrain, a Lost Sector full of Cabal, nothing else. And the nice thing about Lost Sectors, you're not running around fighting other people for kills, they're all yours. So if you need Solar Kills and Precision Kills, take a Solar Hand Cannon in there and be precise. Get a Solar head ca head Hand Cannon Kill with that precision shot and hit like three objectives at the same time. So the nice thing about Lost Sectors, you don't have to fight anybody else. Take your time, get the kills however you like. It's nice thing about that. Now, if you are on a Hunter, as I said, the best way to go is Fallen. Right here in the Trostland, the Atrium's good. You got Terminus East, you got Widow's Walk, all three of these Lost Sectors right here loaded with Fallen and you can honestly get to the Trost, you can reload the Trostland Lost Sector once you're like done in, in the Lost Sector. You can come back to the Trost Land, head back into another one, and it's a pretty short drive to each one. So if you're looking for Fallen, Trost Land, any Lost Sector, pretty much good to go there. So that's about one of the only major differences you'll see is kind of the type of enemy that you need to defeat. Now, if we come down here to the arms, I uh, need to defeat combatants, 50. And now the big thing is, make sure you do a little reading on the descriptions just to be clear. Notice this is defeat combatants in the European Aerial Zone. I was killing stuff in Lost Sectors, I still haven't touched the objective here yet. So you need to defeat combatants in the European Aerial Zone. I also need to defeat combatants with super abilities. Okay, use supers. Sometimes that one's probably naturally just going to happen. 
and defeat combatants in the European Aerial Zone while using an ARC subclass. Now, I'm going to have to verify if it means ability kills or just having that subclass equipped. But reading stuff like this combined two birds with one stone. So if I'm going to go into the European Aerial Zone on my Titan, even if the Singe itself says that it's solar, which it is today as I'm recording this one, and what do I mean by that? If you go to the map and you'll notice it says European Aerial Zone, it's got the little fire day, but also solar searing or searing solar light. Bosses and mini bosses are more are significantly more vulnerable to solar damage. So while running solar in the actual instance itself is going to benefit you. If you're working on your character's, you know, class, and I'm trying to get, you know, kills in the AZ as an ARC subclass, I'm still going to run ARC until I've completed this objective. Then if I'm doing anything else in the European Aerial Zone, then I can switch back to Solar. So that's a big thing to remember. Focus more on what your armor asks for. Make sure you click on it. Read the description to be like, defeat combatants in the European Aerial Zone and defeat them in the aerial zone with using an arc subclass, which may be arc abilities, so grenades, melees, and supers, definitely something to consider there as well. Now when you come down to the chest, five adventures. Now this may be on the boots, the cloak, some of these may be moved around depending on what class you're running. Everybody's got to run five adventures. Now remember, if you're looking for adventures, what you need to do is find where the flashpoint is. It's the only place you're going to find adventures. Now, it doesn't have to be heroic, so if you have any or adventures you haven't done, but typically at this point, the adventures are going to be on the planet where you have the flashpoint, and this time we've got Mercury. Now, you could run the heroic over and over and over. It's low enough level, it's not going to matter. Or you could mix it up and do some of these other ones. But either way, if you're looking for adventures, go to the planet with the flashpoint, and that's where you're guaranteed to find some. You may do the same one five times if you're grinding it out in the same day. Idea would be if you want to spread this thing out, you get a different adventure every day. You could do one every five days or one every day and then do it over the course of five days. But if you want to grind it out, you're going to be running the same adventure five times, which might be boring, but you got to do what you got to do. Now, the next thing that's going to happen during this entire event is orbs are going to drop. Now, you'll notice here it says strikes. I need solar orbs. When it comes to the hunter and the warlock, I'm sure in strikes, you're going to need different types of orbs. Because if I come down here in Gambit Crucible, you can see I need Void Orbs. So again, every subclass is going to have different orbs that they need. But also don't forget, you can see down here on the mark, I need 400 just orbs in general. It doesn't matter what type, Arc, Solar, or Void. So you're going to need all of them at some point. And as you go through and do some of these activities, you're going to have different characters and classes playing with you in a Strike playlist or the Gambit playlist. You're going to have people playing with you. So it's really not going to be as big of a deal to get the variety. But make sure and check what you need to focus. If I go into Gambit for my boots, for example, and I need void orbs, I'm going to load up everything void that I can. So I'm not going to the European Aerial Zone, so I don't need to worry about the Arc subclass. I'm going to go void subclass. I'm going to find a void weapon. Gnawing Hunger is going to be great. Maybe I'll go find a void sword. Cool. Everything I do in Gambit, I'm going to be killing with void. Now, when you kill something with void energy of any kind, be it a weapon or an ability, you're going to get void orbs to drop. And if it's bigger enemies, I think they drop a couple extra orbs. You need to make sure and run over and pick up those orbs. It's going to allow you to pick them up. And the other key thing is you're going to be playing with other people. If I'm a Titan and I see a Warlock in there and he's making Arc orbs, well, he probably needs Arc for his objective. So don't be mad about other people running different things. They're just working on the requirements for their armor. If you're doing all three characters, I'm sure you're going to see all three. So coming back to the chest. After the five adventures, you're going to have, you know, in strikes... I need 100 solar orbs. So again, I would run more like this. Solar weapon, solar weapon, solar subclass, and then I would queue up in the strike playlist. Now, another thing to remember, say I need precision final blows and I haven't done those. Take a weapon that you feel comfortable getting precision final blows with, whether it's a pulse rifle, scout rifle, bow, sniper, hand cannons even. Take something where you can get some precision final blows. And again, try and find the ways to combine as many things as possible. If I need to go run strikes... And it says, complete adventures, collect solar orbs and strikes, and defeat opposing guardians in the crucible. Now, what you could potentially do, I could go into, not the strike playlist, I can go pick strikes. So I can go pick Savathun's song, and then the key here, I'm going to get precision final blows, say with my primary. I can switch over, also work on defeating Hive while I'm running Savathun's song. I'm in a strike, so I'm using a solar weapon here, or here even, solar hand cannon, it's going to cross a whole bunch of things off. 
as I go through. So try and look through all of your objectives over your armor, combined as many efforts at the same time as feasibly possible. Defeat opposing guardians. Now you can do this in potentially Gambit, but my advice, go into Crucible. You're gonna have a lot more people to shoot. Couple matches control, you're probably gonna be done. There's usually a lot of people to shoot. For the boots, public events, five, wherever you need to do them. My guess, honestly, if you're trying to do, bird, do two birds with one stone, stone, figure out where the contact public event is so you can do your um, interference mission. Go do the contact public event at least two of the times and then roam around for the rest of the public events if you want to knock those out a little quicker. So I need 100 void orbs and crucible. As I said, other classes, hunter and warlock, you may need solar orbs and crucible. You may need arc orbs and crucible. Just make sure and read your description. Solstice packages. You need to unlock 10 of them. Now what you'll notice as you do activities, you're going to see... A fragment of a key used to open a solstice package from the European aerial zone. You're going to get these from a lot of places. I got one with somebody finished a wave of the escalation protocol. If you do strikes, you'll probably be seeing some. And then once you go into the actual European aerial zone, you're going to pick these things up. And what you need, as you can see, is 15 keys per package. So I need to open 10 packages means I need 150 keys. Now that may sound like a lot. But if you start running, you know, you run three or four strikes, a couple crucible matches, run Gambit a couple times, go finish a Lost Sector, you're going to start getting keys all over the place, and at some point you're going to have more keys than packages. So don't worry too much about that. Just know that you have to open 10, so you're going to need at least a combination of 50, 150 keys, and don't open the packages until you are, make sure for one, you're wearing your armor, and two, that you, you know, don't pick up that you know, don't pick up a package the first time you go through and waste it, for example. So make sure you have the keys and the packages completely ready. Don't open them for a little bit. Then make sure you have your piece of gear equipped, your boots. Then open all 10 of them together and make sure you check that box. Don't waste any of those. Not fun. Finally, down here on the mark, playlist strikes. Now, here's the fun part. I was saying I need 100 solar orbs and strikes. Okay. But I also need to run five strikes. So what I said earlier is if you wanted to go work on Hive, you could, but the Lost Sector is probably quicker. And then likely just go do your five playlist strikes. If you get Hive, great. If you don't, well, you still have the Lost Sector, which is probably going to be faster than any strike you do. And then just make sure when you go into strikes that you take solar weapons, solar heavy weapons, a solar subclass. So you're getting your solar orbs and completing your strikes at the same time. Same thing. You need five Gambit matches. Make sure you're running Void in those Gambit matches. This tier to upgrade overall isn't that bad. But again, make sure you check what your character requires. If you're on Warlock and Hunter, there are slight variations between be it Hive or Arc or Solar. And then just pay attention to those pieces. This one really isn't too bad. The next one is the bigger grind. So if you guys want to see what the next video is going to hold, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and the alert bell. I'm going to get that video to you guys as soon as I can. Uh, basically, I've got a little work thing to do, and then I'm going to be grinding out this set. As soon as it's done, I'm going to come back, record a video just over tips over that next set of armor. So stay tuned for that one. If you guys enjoyed this video, drop a like below. Leave a comment if you got any questions. You guys can find me on Twitch and Twitter. But again, sub to that channel right here if you haven't yet. We're less than 500 subs away from 50K. So thank you guys very much. Have a fantastic one. I'll see you soon.